We're back out at the big lake once again, and today we're talking about how locating those bass every time you go out fishing is as easy as one, two, three. Stick around, you don't want to miss this one. There we go, I got him. Ooh, that feels good. That feels pretty nice. And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations! If you would like to have a chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing. And as anglers, whenever we head out to the water to go bass fishing, we really don't have much of a plan most of the time, do we? We grab the rods, we grab the tackle, we load them up in the boat or load them up in the back of the truck, and off we go. We just don't really think about what we're going to do. We say, hey, I'll figure it out when I get there. When I get to the water, that's when I'll strategize. That's when I'll come up with a plan. And a lot of times, that doesn't work. We end up getting skunked. You know, we'll catch fish here and there, but whenever we don't have a plan, whenever we don't have a strategy, that's when we leave ourselves open for that skunk. And on this channel, well, we try to get rid of the skunk as much as we can. I know I probably take bass fishing a little bit too seriously, and whenever you're out with the kids, out with your nieces and nephews, your grandkids, you know, showing them how to fish for brim or whatever, just out on the weekend having a good time, that's fine. But whenever I'm going bass fishing, I take it very seriously and I'm there to catch fish. So I want to make sure that I'm doing every single thing possible that I can to put myself on fish. And the beauty of this strategy, the beauty of the way this works is it applies to all types of bass, whether it's largemouth, whether it's smallmouth, or whether it's spotted bass, because it takes advantage of their behaviors. And it's so simple to do, right? Now, first of all, it starts before we ever even head to the lake. A lot of times, you know, we know in advance, hey, I've got a couple of days here. I'm going to be going to the lake that day. And what have I said? Well, that's when we get on Google Maps or that's when we break out the graphs and the charts and that's when we start picking apart beforehand the places that we want to target. We have an idea of the places that we already want to go. We know, okay, this is where the bass are set up this time of year. This is what they're doing. I know that that's what I want to do. So literally, you know, that's probably step 1A right, is getting the things together before you even go and knowing the places on the lake you want to target. It doesn't even matter if you have a boat or if you're fishing from the bank. This applies to all anglers. Have a plan of attack before you even get there. Pick the waters out that you want to target, okay? Now step one, well, this is a super easy step. You can do this just by getting out of your truck and looking in the water or looking around or whatever, and that is find signs of life. It doesn't matter if you're in a boat. It doesn't matter if you're fishing from the bank. If you do not see signs of life, if you're not seeing minnows, if you're not seeing bait fish, if you are not seeing those prey species and that sort of activity, well, keep on moving. It does not matter how juicy that spot is. It doesn't matter if you see shade lines or if you see flooded brush or if you see timber or you see docks or whatever. If you don't see food, you won't see bass. It's just that simple. Rule number one, the most important thing whenever it comes to fishing for bass, rule number one will always be follow the food chain. So it doesn't even have to do with finding bass. We're not even looking for the bass themselves. We are looking for their forage. It can be crawfish, it can be bluegills, it can be minnows. It can even be birds. You see birds walking along the banks, you know, egrets, cranes, herons, whatever, you know. You see kingfishers, you see, you know, the, the predatory species that are feeding on the bait fish as well. Well, they're going to be targeting those bait fish so you know that's there. So you can kind of get a clue, you can get a key of what's going on right when you get to the lake so you know. Yeah, whenever you find the places that you want to target, right? We've looked for them on the map before, and whenever you roll up to them or whenever you 
get up to them in a boat or whatever, and you're looking around, and if you don't see any signs of life, keep right on moving. It doesn't matter how juicy that spot is. Keep on moving. There are no bass there. All right, we've got this Lucky Craft classical leader tied on. Kind of like this really, it's almost like a holographic, a little shiny on it. I'm thinking my poor old trolling motor needs some maintenance. I have beat it up pretty bad over the past year. There we go. Oh yeah, that's nice. Well, that's not really nice, but get up here, you. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Eh, he's not bad. I had him pretty good. On the old, what is that? Classical leader. Eh, about a pound. Little bitty guy. Hi, right, little buddy. Thank you. Thank you very much for playing. All right. Okay, so we spent the night before and we've targeted some spots. Now, whenever we've got there, we have found the food. We're finding the food chain, right? We're seeing the bait fish. We're seeing the minnows. We're seeing the panfish. We're seeing the birds in the area. Now, we haven't seen any bass, but that's okay. We don't need to see those bass to know that they are there because they're gonna be following the food, right? Bass are inherently lazy, we've said that before. They wanna have easy access to their meals. So they're going to do that, all right? So now that we've found that, what do we want to do? Well, now we're going to look around and we're going to find some good places where those bass are going to relate. We wanna look for cover, we wanna look for structure. Now that we've found the prey species, now we look for the shade lines. Now is where we look for the timber, right? And then whenever we locate those areas and we find the areas that have structure, have cover, well then we're going to look inside those areas for the hidden gem inside the spot, right? As Steve Rogers always says, and it's so true, find the spot inside the spot. That is going to be your highest percentage area. Say you have a long row of shade line, right, with some flooded brush on it. You could spend all day pitching that. Or you can look in there and you can say, hey, there's a branch that extends out across the water in the middle of that shade line. Well, start working that branch from out to in because that's going to be the spot that stands out, right? Or if you're seeing a large hydrilla flat and it just looks like a big acre of meh, there's everything around there looks exactly the same. But you look out and you see, oh, there's a flooded stump, one flooded stump that just barely sticks out above the water in all that hydrilla. Well, that's going to be another example of a spot within a spot. So those are the types of things you're going to look for. Those are your high percentage areas. So we've got the two hardest things out of the way. We've located bait and we've located the spot within the spot. So now we know where the bass are and we can start fishing, right? Well, that's gonna take us to step number three. There we go, I got him. Ooh, that feels good. That feels pretty nice. No, you're not getting off. I got you. Oops. No, 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 no. Swing it out. Yeah. Yep. All right. Oh, yeah, I had him good. That's with that softer tip. Oops. Oops, 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 oops. Again, as I was trying to, uh, as I was trying to say, the softer tip on that rod is what allows me to do that, but uh -uh. don't you swing, don't you try to swing. All right, he's got it. That's a nice little pound and a quarter. 
not quite a pound and a half, somewhere in that area. Good little bass. Nice little bass. Thank you, buddy. We sure do appreciate it. Have a good day. All right, let's go on to the next one. And step number three, well, this is where we deviate just a little bit. And this is where it becomes a little bit more dependent upon the fishery that you live on or the fishery that you call your home lake. And that is check the conditions, right? What's the weather? What's the water temperature? What's the water clarity? What's the, you know, the sky? What is going on around you in the environment? And use that to dictate what it is you're going to throw and how you're going to throw it. We're even talking about, like we said before, we're talking about things like time of day. Because where those shadows fall, right? Talking about that stump in the hydrilla flat, we want to target the shadow of that stump. And where that shadow falls, well, that depends on what time of day it is, doesn't it? Because that shadow is going to be swinging around as the sun moves. So, again, like we said before, it all ties in together. We've got to pay attention to where those shade lines are, where that sun is going to be during the day. So that's another thing that we need to think about. So we found the bait, we found an isolated spot, and we know the conditions, and we know what baits work in those conditions. And using those things, using those three simple things, we have found a way to maximize our efficiency on the water, to maximize our effectiveness on the water. And I guarantee you that you will put yourself on bass a lot more often than you will get skunked. So there you have it. Three simple steps that work for any fishery in the country. That's the beauty of this system, is that it is completely portable. You can use it on your home lake, or you can use it on a brand new body of water you've never even been to before. It all works exactly the same way. Find the food, locate the high percentage area, and use the environment around you to dictate what types of baits and presentations you want to throw based on that fishery. And I'm telling you, you will have success more often than not. So give this system a try and let us know exactly how it works out for you. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.